TV. And we're back. And when I say we're back, it means we're back with an interview um, with someone who is going to give us a bit more truth. Uh, for the last few months, we've been focusing on entertaining you and on giving you everything possible that isn't uh, based in more facts and news flashes. So today, as we're on BitChute and brand new tube now, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get back to doing an interview, a follow-up interview with a lovely lady that we started to interview last year, Elaine Searle. So here we are back with the positive news or interview with heroes, part two, Elaine Searle. So hi there, Elaine. How is it where you are at the moment? Juice. Hey everyone, welcome to Moving On TV. And today is Tuesday, I think it's the, is it the 12th? 12th of January. Oh, <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I'm, I'm literally working all night and sleeping all day. I went to bed, I think about 9 a.m. And I just woke up ready for the interview. Um, I woke up about six, knowing that I had to get up. So literally nearly slept the whole day without realizing it. And uh, it's just so amazing to be here because I've got the lovely Elaine Searle. And uh, I said, we're going to have a little bit of a chat um, about things, but we're going to start off just chatting, an easy little chat, which you can watch on here on YouTube. And then we're going to take it into more serious stuff. So we hope you can join us into the uh, more exciting stuff and more interesting stuff that we can put on here on YouTube, which is going to go on to other platforms. So welcome to Moving On TV, Elaine. And how are you? I mean, how was your Christmas and, and your new year? How, how have you been getting on since I saw you last year? Well, um, my Christmas, because of the restrictions, was very quiet, but... Um, we were in contact on the phone and that all day. So, you know, I met family on on a telephone or online, but not in person because um, they, they, of course, aren't allowed to stay overnight. So, mm -hmm. you know, okay. I, live, I live about 80 miles from my nearest son, so it would be easier if they stayed with me. But... Um, I, I, for many years, I was the main family holder of, of Christmas and I did all the cooking and everything it used to take me weeks to get it all ready, much as I enjoyed it. And my sister used to help and so on. It was really nice to have a quiet Christmas. <laughs> so you know, wonderful. Silver you know, linings, eh? <laughs> oh, it was lovely. Yeah. You know, no cooking. I cooked Christmas <laughs> Eve and thought, right. I'm going to have a nice leisurely day on Christmas Day. And I didn't get dressed till lunchtime. I slogged about the house in all sorts. And then I walked the dog and um, met a few people out. And then, of course, came home and slogged about for the rest of the day. So, but I ate all the wrong things, you know, Christmas cake and chocolate log and mince pies and lots of cheese and... The sort of things you do at Christmas, you know, and um, I don't know. It, it was very different, but I, I enjoyed it. I have to say I enjoyed it. Yeah. Fabulous. That, that is a really nice way that we can actually go with the interview initially. Let's have a look at the silver linings, because as you were saying that, it's very interesting because the silver linings I had at Christmas was just me and entertaining me and the cats. And my husband came in Christmas Day. I don't know if you watched um, my alter ego character, Boba Bertha. But she's... I did watch Boba. I like you Boba. watch her? Oh, you love Boba. Oh, I'm so like excited. Boba. She's got a fan. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the whole of Christmas, she ran the Christmas show. And uh, um, it was brilliant because I can be as, you know, it's a really good way to be able to get everything out without upsetting anyone. Because yeah. And um, so um, my husband, we're separ my separated husband, we've been separated now, wow, nearly five, five months, I think, I've been on my own. And right. feeling really good, you know, having the space, be able to do my own thing. And it's, it's really annoying when he comes around. He, he tidies up. 
and I can't find anything again. I think, well, I, now I'm really grateful that I did this because he has a tendency to do that. Anyway, Christmas, he brought around dinner and Baba, Baba did all of that, did the whole show um, as Baba Bertha. And um, so the silver linings I had was in particular, God, he didn't have to go shopping, buy any presents. I know. That madness, I completely, I, I just, it was just like an ordinary day, apart from the fact that I was entertaining continuously. And that was, it was brilliant. I, I did more singing and entertaining than I've done my whole life. So that was yeah. the biggest silver lining. And then, oh, New Year's Eve was just stunning. Um, a couple of the guys came over um, from um, my musical. They've become like my family because I'm mm -hmm. doing a new musical. And we yeah. maybe it's cold outside and we spent some time together. And a couple of friends came from Gloucester all the way. All star seeds came specially for me. And it was incredible. So yes. New year. And That's lovely, isn't it? So these are the silver linings. Um, um, I wanted to say here, before we go into more, you know, serious stuff that we'll take into a different platform, we'll spend about 20 minutes talking about maybe, you know, things that we can talk about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to do a special Boba Bertha for bit shoot. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. You do <laughs> you it know, quite so well, you know. So <laughs> I, the first time I saw you, I thought, she's gone loopy. <laughs> <laughs> Before you realise, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And thought, oh, she's doing, yeah, she's really good, yeah. So, well, uh, the comedian of the Ascension. Somebody said to me, "Call moving on TV, Ascension TV." Yeah, put that in now. And uh, it's a time really to go out there and to realise every single dream you have, and that's what I'm doing, and bringing on everybody else that has a dream. And that they can do the same. Um, but yeah. it got to a point where I started to get bored. And I thought um, nine months ago, I was doing these amazing interviews and really bringing everything up. And of course, I've lost a lot of subscribers because they want the real gut stuff. So we'll go into that. In, it's now seven o'clock. So in about 15 minutes, we'll cut to the, the real uh, you know, stuff that we want to talk about. But in the meantime... Uh, let's just talk about, you know, when you were saying it's a really good angle, silver linings. Now, because the human spirit is so strong. Well, I live in a place that's very quiet in the winter and um, normally there's no one around and you can walk for miles and hardly see a soul. You can drive for miles and hardly see a soul. It's really um, a different from the summer when... Everybody arrives, there's lots of walkers, you know, you, you can't go downtown without being jostled and all this sort of thing. Well, um, this Christmas, more people um, have actually, now they're working from home, come to live in their holiday homes. So you see, you see more people around, but they're very friendly and they're very talkative and they, they all want to be um they want to be approached you know within the distancing we're allowed and everything i met three guys who were um working at um a local hotel but of course it had been closed down so they got all this spare time on their hands we had a lovely chat they were only youngsters and they, we had a lovely chat about um exmoor and the places to see and they were spending their time going out every day, you know. So basically, um, it, for them, it was like having a, a paid holiday in a place they'd never been before. So there are those sort of things, you know, that it's just so lovely to find the peace and quiet and friendliness and warmth of the community here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find that lockdown has given us given us some gifts in a way because basically what we've done is we've had to sort of start looking at our surroundings at what we're capable of about things we like doing and and those jobs that you perhaps 
you used to knit maybe or, or you used to sew or you used to do something that life became too busy for. So now you you've got the time to do that. I mean, I, I've um, I've taken up knitting again. I've created all sorts of other things. I've done some decorating with some artwork in the decorating, you know. And I'm seriously thinking of doing a class for watercolors. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this if I wasn't on lockdown. Well, I would have been, but I wouldn't have chosen it. Yeah. There's a so I can you know. really that's amazing because I I can really identify with you in in the way that um I picked up my dream and as I said I'm really it, it it's happening yeah it would it never happened before and even even though um look I have to be very careful what I say because I have people in that I know of suffering terrible because of the lockdown. They've lost everything, their businesses, and they're really not doing, you know, they're struggling. And my heart goes out to them. Me. But this is not, this is more about, I, I don't have, a, I've been evicted. Okay, let's put it that way. I've had, I've got an eviction notice hanging over my head. I don't. Uh, the only way I can, I'm trying to empathize with a lot of people is that financially it hasn't, you know, I haven't got anything and I haven't really moved on at all. However, the lockdown has given me an opportunity to live every single day uh, or sleep every day and work every night <laughs> to the utmost and literally pick up a microphone at night and say, right, I'm doing insomniacs for anybody who can't sleep now. And yeah. give me my heart and soul, like as if I'm on the stage, I'm not needing a theater and just literally giving and giving and giving without even thinking about the money. And I've been lucky enough to get universal credit and for my ex to be taking care of me with food. And, and so I'm not lacking. Mm. I've been, I mean, I, I, I got to a point where I'm still, starting to believe I'm taken care of I have to because um I I had the police after me you know <laughs> well like the rest of us in the way that you know before in July uh, and August I was out there with Kate and Mike yes yes I know yeah putting up leaflets um I did something I wasn't supposed to do in the shopping center and Bad girl. They, they filmed me and in August, and they came after me in November. Did they? November wanted mm. me to go in and to talk, and I said, no way, I'm not doing any of that, forget it. So they started getting threatening and everything. And so I, I got to a point where I'd become sociophobic. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. I cut all of that off, and I went back to being a good girl and doing only, you know, backing off, backing off also by talking to the white hats, because yes. I got intel, I have got contacts, which we're going to go into. And they said, Lauren, we just want you. We don't want you to get cut off. So can you just focus on doing certain stuff? And we had like three hour conversations with, you know, Michael, Michael Paul McVeigh. Yeah. He's, he's just amazing. And he calls me, you know, regularly. And Good. he said, I want you to focus, be careful. So I backed down. And then um, I, my husband, ex-husband, became a, a go-between with the police. And they and we said, look, she doesn't go anywhere. She can't come and see you, yada, yada. So they came up with the form and said, I just have to sign it and that'll be the end of it. But I've got to get around it because I'm not having anyone in this house. I'm not having one of that lot in my house. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, what I'm saying, what am I saying, is um, things that, got I guess it got very very hot with me and I had them here knocking on that they tried to break in oh I've been through so much and and I thought okay well I'm backing down now and then of course um I took back the entertainment and the singing and I thought well what do you want to do Lauren I want to run down the street singing the sound of music like when I was 13 years old that's it and that's what I did so again I've diversified. So with all the empathy and the heart that I have for these people that I know have lost everything because of 
financially. Um, they are on Moving on TV and I am doing everything possible, getting trying to get them interviews with Charlie. Because Charlie Ward is, is, if you can get an interview with Charlie now, you're, you're, you're like with um, what used to be Oprah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's well, so funny and viewed. I have to say, you know, he's shared an awful lot of information and and he is um, tireless. He works all hours. And... He's incredible. He's yeah. Incredible. And I, I saw somebody put a, a message on against him the other day. And I thought, how fickle people can be. You remember what they did to Jesus? Yes. By him. The minute he doesn't give you exactly what you want, they were turning against him on this group. Mm. And I thought, you know, how, how dare you? The man is working day and night, day and night, day and night to keep you just on the vibration of hope, which yeah. I'm doing with entertainment. And people yeah. can be yeah. like that. I've seen it. They just turn against you so quickly. And so... They're shallow, aren't they? People on are pedestals. Mm. And unfortunately in life, as well as what they've done with Charlie. So, but my intention is, I've got another interview with him next Tuesday. Right. Everyone is coming on, moving on TV, who's, uh, they're all incredible souls. They're all incredible star seed. They're geniuses. I'm doing everything possible to get them onto Charlie's show. Um, like I have a friend and uh, he's, he created the first generation med beds. He's already doing it with light and sound. Yeah. He's a genius. Mm. And he's been on them, Elaine. And I, that's why I'm here now. And, you know, he's also a musician. And we got a Grammy nomination because of that med bed. <laughs> Hey, we did music afterwards, and he gets rid of varicose veins, depression, you know, pain. I've done it, and so I'm I'm hoping that at some point he's going to go on Charlie's show. Mm -hmm. And silver lining here is that the whole of my life and his life, he couldn't get any recognition or work, and now because God or something gave me nine months ago the um, opportunity. I just didn't know what to do. I just knew what to do. Go on there, do moving on TV and connect to these people because we all started at the same time. Now I'm getting contacts from people that I can't say on here. I think you know what I mean. Who are on my Facebook who are equivalent to connecting to the queen <laughs> who I really wouldn't want anything to do with god forbid um but now we're literally everything is just open and once all of this is over your career is just gonna whoosh because you are the awakening and so I'm excited because it's not just me it's him as well he's going to be doing the med beds, he's going to be healing everyone like he's always wanted to do and getting paid for it. So what mm. I'm trying to say, I'm saying that I'm so grateful that we, we thought of this silver lining thing because people, I think we just need patience. Another few months and I think we're going to come out of it. And if we just say, thank you, God, I'm going to have patience and I know in a way, what I'm going through is um, a situation a bit like Job, Job in, in the Bible. Everything is taken away from me. Everything, all the materialistic stuff, and I need to really tap into what I really am here to do. Yeah. And, and now, even though I can't see it yet, even though I just do it and I carry on doing the work, even though I don't get paid, I do it because it gets me up and it makes me happy and it's my life. And if you took away money, it wouldn't matter because all I want, Elaine, is a, is a home. That is, yeah. I just want a home where I can never be evicted again. And yeah. I want that to come off the human race. How can a human evict a human? And how can they do it around Christmas? So anyway, that, I want that to come off the human race. I want every single person to thrive and so the message is going out loud and clear if you are come on moving on tv and you join you will be the itv the bbc and the sky of the future and all your dreams are just gonna happen boom 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 
So just trust and, and, you know, just tap into your dream. So on that note, as I've spoken a lot too much, <laughs> as usual, um, just to say to you, what is your dream, by the way? And, and how, you know, if, is there any way that I can help you or that we can do this together? What is your big dream? Or have you got well, that or are you still looking for? Because me, it's just to run the media. <laughs> which isn't big <laughs> to get on the box in front of every single person that they can never go through this again because there'll be a, a, a TV station that says to them, you are in charge of your life, mate. Don't let, I'm only going to tell you that this is what's happening and you can choose one way or another, you know, and I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you the opportunity to know that this is not true and this is true, you know, and, and the kind of media that we could have had and um, where I can have my own home. And if I feel like it, I can buy a car or I can jump on a plane and go to a hot country being free. We well, might well have anti-gravity cars by then. We'll, we'll be flying. Yeah. <laughs> mm. with her, but we won't go into that yet. Because again, I've got the white hats and the others looking, watching the program uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I've got both sides. Yeah, I, do you know I got wiped off Facebook not because I was naughty, because I was doing something. I, I was actually doing Baba Bertha, believe it or not. Hi. And I said something I shouldn't have said about someone who's very high up in a comedy way. I didn't realize I was predicting the future. <laughs> Sometimes we're told things and we don't realize what it is. Yeah, I was predicting everything and I got wiped off because they didn't <laughs> give away this. Because I had a long conversation with Mike. I said, Why did they wipe me off my personal? I didn't do anything wrong. I was doing comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it flicking. He said, Lauren, they've wiped off loads of psychics. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. Can't do, but that was actually the good guys. <laughs> so anyway, so coming back to balance here. So um, what I was trying to say is I just want a life where everyone is free, everyone, every human, and that's what we've been doing from the beginning, where they well, express their creativity and their talents. Everyone can have a home. And everyone can travel. Absolutely. Um, I, what I, is your dream, Elaine? What's your dream? I'll pin you now and I'll mute myself. You know, years ago, I started work in social housing. And um, I've done all sorts of social housing work. And um, I did a master's degree, um, which I didn't complete, but I did it. And um, I did that all, it, all to do with my housing work. And in my heart, the theory, well, the theory of social housing was that everybody who wasn't capable of having a huge mortgage or maintaining a loan or anything like that would have a decent home over their head. And that was the philosophy, if you like, that was theirs for as long as they needed it, as long as they stuck to a few basic rules, i.e., you know, keeping the house reasonable, not destroying the neighbours and, you know, all sorts of things. But also the landlords had certain responsibilities to keep the property up, um, look after you, keep an eye on you, this, that and the other. Gradually over the years, it's gone it's become all about money, all about making ends meet, um, and less and less money has been poured into housing. What I would like to see is a comprehensive survey done and proper housing supplied for anyone who needs it. And there are very much, um, there's, there's a variety of housing available that we could put up very quickly in the right places and each person would have a lovely little home, okay. And also families, you could use the same, same sort of thing. Modern day technology has made it very easy to put up a decent home 
without all the planning, the bricks and mortar, you know, the digging drains and all this, that and the other. There's, um, there's modular housing, for instance, you know, where it's all done, ready, you just click it together and there you are, you've got, to, got your house. But I would love to see that. I would yeah. love to see that come back in, you know. The idea was there many years ago and charities set up who became housing associations um, who wanted to do that. But they, they got waylaid by government regulations, bureaucracy, um, money, et cetera, et cetera. And it's got worse and worse. And now you get very little help when once you're in a social housing house. Um, they don't maintain them as well as they should do. Um, if apparently there's, because of the lockdowns, and of course we've had um, a lot of building has stopped happening. So the housing uh, need has gone up tremendously over that time. Um, and it was far behind anyway, you know, they needed um, to put more effort into it anyway. So one, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see that. And I would like to be part of that. Um, and also, of course, we've got um, rescued people who are going to need housing. And um, I would like to be part of that. Um, but my dream is to retire to a little kind of retreat where people would be able to come and recharge when they needed it without paying a lot of money. Okay. Join with me, went for a meal occasionally if they wanted, you know, do a bit of yoga or tai chi and, you know, just rest and relax um, and rejuvenate. I'd like to provide that for people who work with people who have a lot of needs yeah it sounds amazing and it sounds very similar i i did an interview with the brett foundation a wonderful lady around here called sue brett a couple of years ago and she literally created um something like that for homeless people in maidenhead not very far from me mm. i said to her my dream was to provide housing for everyone. If I was a millionaire, this is what I would do. Um, this is why I feel the money always went to the wrong people. <laughs> well, it won't in the future. Please, God, yeah, the future, what's coming um, is I, will, I would have bought a whole lot of houses, like a huge amount of houses in this area. I would have given it to everyone. However, I would have given them life coaching. So they all were appointed a life coach and a counsellor and a nutritionist. So they would have everything. And of course, entertainment. And you see, to me, life coaching, I, I started on this premises. I ran something uh, in the vein of trying to create uh, this years ago called the Hope Centre in the middle of High Wycombe. I was given a space for a couple of weeks and I brought people in and I said to them, OK, if you can't pay, what can you do? Can you draw a picture? Can you do a meal for me? And that's how you wake people up because every single person has got a talent or something that they can offer. And if it's not, you know, to me, it was, it was never about money, you know, because I was always lucky enough to be in a situation where I was either working so I could bring in a little bit enough because I live on very little, you know. Yeah, I mean uh -huh. you, you know, uh, my husband was working and slaving at the, well, one thing I can't wait is for the duty free to disappear out of this planet because he, they were making like billions from whiskeys and wines and he would come here, come home with the money he did and give it to a greedy landlord. And that, and I was waking up more and more all the time, watching and watching and thinking, what I want, would want to do, as I say, coming back to the positive in this center is bring in people would come off off the street. They come in here and they talk to me because they knew that I would empathize because I had a history of I don't believe in mental illness anymore. And I I got my car smashed in about that as well, because you've got to get people out of their identities and they don't want to. I agree totally. I they agree. don't want to come out a lot of them. So. Late causes a lot of problems 
I know, and they don't want to come out. So they smash my car in because of the way I say that I don't believe in mental illness anymore. Because again, I want to focus on the silver line is a positive. So this center, the Hope Center that I started years ago, um, literally people came off the street and they come in to talk to me and they would paint something or they would do tapestry. I've got films of it that I made that had a woman and she was the bird lady of High Wycombe and I filmed her. And today is the community day. Today's Community Tuesday and her film will go up. Mm. She was talking to me about feeding the birds because that was their whole life. Mm. And everyone came on and they tapped into something and it what and if they could, they gave me a donation and that's how we kept it going. But if not, they would they would literally cook a meal and bring me food. And I thought, wow, this is it. This is the consciousness. And I was living for 26 years with someone. That he's a beautiful soul. Don't get me wrong. A beautiful soul, a lovely man. But he's stuck in that consciousness of I have to go to the airport and I have to bow down and I have to do what they tell me and come Lauren, up we had oh, so much to a landlord. I couldn't yeah. do it anymore, so I had to let him go. And we're now very good friends because my consciousness is, no, you come here, you lay down your burdens, you bring a, we will figure it out. We will figure it out. We will find homes for everyone. We will bring for many years. I was some coaches who... are looking for work for free everywhere. Yeah. Mm. To train as part of their training. I know millions, not millions, hundreds. They could be placed. They would love it in these houses because people need to understand what they really are. And, and when I say bringing the hope and glory back into your life, sorry to stop you there, Elaine, because I'm on a roll and I'm very inspired. All right. All right. It means, first of all, you get your hope. Now, hope in Hebrew is tikva. Tikva, of course, it's an open language Hebrew, you know, ah, like ramag. But again, I'm diversifying. But it gave the Jews a reason to hold on to something when they had nothing and they were being kicked around, hope. And so someone said to me, why don't you just call yourself Lauren Glory? And I said, well, you need hope first. And hope is the first thing. Mm. Now, you give people hope by saying to them, you are incredible. I don't give a, a hoot or a shit or shite, if Bob Bertha would say a shite. I don't give a shite <laughs> about what people told you from the time you were born, that you're useless and you're never going to be anything because you're never going to amount to this because you need this. And you, I looked my husband in the eye the other day and I said to him, I literally came from channeling and I said to him, you are amazing. Even though you don't have children, you don't have a home, you don't have a car, you are amazing. You're an amazing soul. You're an amazing man. And you were put here to keep me grounded to a certain extent because I'm a star seed and I'm flying up there. And I would never have done anything. I would never, I wouldn't even have had a roof over my head. It because no. I wanted to do was sing. <laughs> and that's all I've ever, and, and what I'm doing. And I looked him in the eye. And that's what you have to do with every single human and when I was in the therapeutic community you know because my story is chapter eight we had a bell and you rang it and you said help I'm here and I've never stopped think talking since I got on moving on tv in order to get that message across come here ring your bell and say I'm important Lauren said that I'm allowed to be me. I'm allowed to express who I really am. Well, guess what? I want like a home, a real home that I don't have to pay every single penny that, that my, I'm earning or somebody else. But to have this and never how anyone can give someone a court order at Christmas. This is just Scrooge again. Uh, in my heart. Yeah, every, everybody deserves an affordable home. Every, an affordable home uh, and he their health. Everyone deserves to be healthy because what seems to have happened here, and, and again, I'm going to upset a lot of people and I don't care. It's time to be very honest here. But who the hell are these people that are saying they can heal people and asking them for thousands and thousands of pounds, like putting them on cruise ships like the Abraham Hicks, 
I, I cannot buy into that. I'm sorry. We all channel like Esther Hicks, but we do not charge £3,000 to go on a cruise ship just to learn how to attract something good into your life. And Reiki, yeah. all this has been taken over by what we're going to talk about in a minute. This well, Reiki, Reiki nowadays is not what Reiki was meant to be. So no. it's changed completely. So basically, okay. um, it's, if you look at ancient ways of, of using Reiki, they are different now. You know, people have um, bastardized it, if you like, to a, to a, a different form. And um, I personally don't believe we need it. I think we can heal ourselves. And um, I think that uh, we are far more powerful than we realize. And it's been suppressed all these years. And I mean, I was teaching one of my neighbors who's 89 how to heal her bad hip the other day. Oh. And um, oh. I invited her up to dinner on Christmas Eve because um, she was on her own. And I thought, um, I'll share my Christmas meal with her. And um, she's now learned how to send energy from her heart to her hip to um, take away the pain and... Um, and give her more mobility and um she she's now i mean she walks further than i do and i've got a dog you know and she's quite amazing but this hip stopped her doing it but she's now starting to do it again so it worked but i literally it's only it's my own way of healing me Amen. and i literally say right okay i concentrate and i open up my heart and i send the heart energy to what hurts and it works. For me, it works. It does work. And for her, it worked too. I was really <laughs> surprised. But you have to trust in these things. I'm obviously given that information for me for a reason. And I thought, well, I'll try and share it. And she's, she's not long realized that she is also psychic. And um, she can use a pendulum. And she used to douse on her father's farm years ago. And um, <laughs> so she can use a pendulum easily, you know, but this is one of the things about lockdown. If you don't actually enjoy the moment in your lockdown, you will miss out on so many things. I mean, I've, as I said, I invited her up for Christmas Eve dinner. I, you know, we've talked about spiritual things we've talked about self-healing our own power we've talked about all sorts of things she's fascinated because she's just discovered that that sixth sense she's always had is very valuable to her you know so i mean that's a that's a real silver lining in the lockdown bit this is know. so exciting um my father died at 95 and he'd still be here if I was over there with him, but, um, but he I wouldn't take any medication. And he was fascinating. Dad taught me everything. I believe that dad was, um, he was a very high star seed like us or something like that. Um, but he was very, very corrupted in the way that he had serious post-traumatic stress from his childhood. And he was put into orphanages and all sorts of stuff. But one of the things about my dad which amazed me is he used to ring me up and uh, he said, um, Lauren, I, I think they're coming to kidnap me because he's Irish and the IRA are coming to get me. And I said, dad, what have you taken? What did they give you? And he said, oh, they gave me something because I can't sleep. And I said, well, just bin it. And he did. And that was it. He came right out of it. Boom. And, yeah. and then he would also ring me up and he'd say, I've got this pain in my leg. He said, what I'm doing is I'm going to put my leg up high on the chair and I'm going to lift my hip. And guess what happened? The sciatica just disappeared. And you freed his nerve. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. And then he things like um, <clears throat> vertigo. He said, I, I got this really serious vertigo. And his, his carer was from the Philippines. And, of course, they know everything about vitamins and minerals you've got 90 year old women climbing trees in the philippines there are my grandmother was a hetero witch well there you go you see yeah. and so they wanted to give dad medication and dad said no 
and he took, uh, uh, he went on Floridix, which was a mixture of vitamins and the vertigo went and we would, and dad would have these conversations with me. And I thought, you know, oh, there's something really strong between me and dad. Mm. Uh, and he would listen and he lived over my mom as well. She, she used to love healing and every time they lived in Israel, my mother was a very sad woman. I'm not going to go into too much. My biggest teacher, again, I think she was one of us. Now I look at it from a different point of view, who again was treated the way, had absolutely no love and brought up by a very cold mother, yada, yada, yada. And so she, her life was total misery. And she told me how not to be grateful for anything. And, and yet when she got cancer, I got her into remission through using um, Brandon Bay's journey. Right. And then the apricot kernels. I, every time, and I would do healing. On apricot it. kernels are amazing. They're yeah. totally preventable, prevent everything. Yeah. And then she'd go into remission, right? And then as soon as I come back to England, she'd get sick again. And then I go over there and do healing. So she was very open and because I loved her. I was the only, I'm the only one, I think, in the whole family and I've got a huge issue at the moment with my I only have one sister and we started to come together it's taken five years since dad died and I cannot get through to her with what we're going to talk about in the second part of this interview um, but you can imagine what I'm trying to say so what also what I'm trying well, to job to convert them it's your job to show yeah. them that you know mm -hmm. and and it's up to them how they take it yeah so you know, when, when we know to the next you know, of the interview well, we'll, we'll talk more about the implications as well of on us of you know of how we have to protect ourselves and get very strong but the other thing as well elaine is I work for the ordinary person. I work for, because that's what I have always seen myself as someone who has struggled incredibly. Um, every, there is no ordinary person. Everyone is unique and everyone is a celebrity. That's what I'm pushing in my message. But we have been pushed to a level where we've been told I mean, I, I watched Peter, uh, what's his name, Peter Andre, and in my gut, I've always known that anyone who got to that level cannot be on a good vibe. And there he is talking about that he's got, you know what, which is impossible. You know, he's saying he had it, yeah, and he's got to get, you know, so he's a puppet like the rest of them. And you have to be a puppet, and yet people bow down to them. They they created idols of these people. But people, people think people are so brainwashed. It reminds yeah. me of Jesus on the cross, and I'm not a practicing Christian. I'm um, a good and godly person, but I'm not a practicing Christian. But G didn't Jesus say on the cross, forgive them, Lord, because they know not what they do? Yes. And that's exactly what's cool. happening now. They don't know what they're doing. They've no idea. They're so brainwashed. They have no idea. That's right. And But the, see, the thing is, Elena, I have watched the progression and I always wanted to make a film, and I will one day, about how a child was born completely pure and beautiful and innocent to a certain extent and how they marred, how they destroyed. This is me, okay? How they took that child and bit by bit, they tried to turn her, to destroy her, ever since I can remember. And yet, look at me. But that's because I, I am a starseed. I'm lucky. I, I, was bought, I came from somewhere else. We came from somewhere else. But when I, you know, without being aloof and without looking down, I'm not. Every single person to me is, is, is light and gold. And everyone could do it more than I do, more than I can, and any of us have done. But I'm a trailblazer because I saw the deterioration. I got to a level where I didn't want to be here anymore. And I said to my husband on my birthday, if this is how it's going to be, where we're go I'm going to be, or we're going to be evicted for the rest of our life every time we move somewhere. And I'm never going to sing anywhere. I'm never going to perform because theatres, you can't afford them anymore. They won't put me on because I'm not celebrity. I did that comedy, the two show, 
with the EDPF ringing up saying, I am EDPF, and that silly little 16-year-old saying, did you bear your boobies to the sun? Because that's what I got. I, not, not in so many words, but loose women said, we're not putting you on. I had sold that Edinburgh every single night. Me, after apparently having a serious mental illness with a, with a team, never falling out, they wouldn't put me on these women. You know, you know now. I'm wow. not Katie Price. Yeah. So I watched the deterioration, Elaine, as a, an ordinary person who didn't want to be here anymore. On my birthday, I said to my husband, if this is it, I want to die now. I've had enough. I've given a certain amount of years, which I've, and now I'm ageless. I've decided I don't have an age anymore. And everyone could, they, you know, one day I'm one age, one day I'm another. I don't give a shit anymore about that. But what I'm saying is I'm, I didn't want to be here. And if this world doesn't change, there's no point of being here. Because if you cannot be yourself and do what you're doing, yes, I can do this. But at some point, the money will be like, OK, I've got to get a sponsor or else I can't do this anymore. But what I'm saying is what they've done to people, particularly they couldn't have a war because Trump ended them. So they created another one and it became turning against you, not turning against you because of your religion, but turning against you because you know in your heart and you've known it all the time that you do not need to go and see a doctor anymore. Like Jesus said, physician heal thyself. It's all inside of you. And because of that, they created a war. How they... Somebody, it was so clever what they've done. They, they're so clever what they did with these masks and how they managed they Yeah, yeah, yeah. But each other. You've, got, you've got to look yeah. on the bright side and you've got to say, some of us knew this. Some of us recognised it for what it was. And some of us have done something about it. So we're going to take the conversation, guys, into into another platform. So if you want to join us, we're going to talk about things that really need to be talked about. Um, but before we go there, so we we just want to say that everyone is watching this on YouTube and don't, we don't take them into the other vibration that we really want to talk about, which is very interesting and exciting. And I want to know everything and I want to pass everything on that I can, is that we want you to know how special you are and all the work that we are doing is without, again, without being aloof because I want to be empathizing and in everyone's shoes. This is literally, you have been put into a situation where you've got to realize your magnificence. And the minute you realize how magnificent you are, like when Jesus would look at you and say, walk or see, the reason you walked or you saw was because you have that in you. And all he did was see that magnificence that you cannot see yet in yourself. And because we are able to see it in ourselves now, we can see it in you. That's all it is. So the minute you look at me, I don't see. I did it with my father and it worked. My father would ring me up and say, Oh, God, Lauren, you've brought my... I, I do it in Baba Bertha. It's so much my father. You've made, me, you've made me blood pressure go up. It's your fault, right? He's Irish. He was Irish and English. And, and a lot of that is dad. And, and one day I caught on to it, thanks to A Course in Miracles. And I looked at him and I, and I saw this, yada, yada, yada. This is ego, this is fear, boom, boom, boom. And I said to him, Dad, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I, I'm not seven years old anymore. You can do this. And I love you. 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 And I'm here because I love you. Not because I came here to write your book. He used to say to me, right, get out a pad now, Lauren, and do my book. This is how he was. Like Don Corleone. I've paid for a ticket for you to come to Israel. You've got to write my book. And I say to him, Dad, I love you. And continuously, and do you know what happened? We became the best of friends. It just shifted. 
and I had the most incredible um, experience. I wrote his life story, but it was different because I just, when he went like that, it was like ego, 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 ego. I love you, dad. I love you. I love you. What you give, you receive. And it shifted. And so well, I think you get, I when you start to get really awake, you actually, you actually begin to see this without really hearing it. It's almost as if they've turned, you've turned the sound off. And you're watching it from a distance, and um, you don't you don't let it ripple your energy, because what we usually do is we let it cause ripples, and it disturbs our energy to the point that that we are we begin to get angry or we begin to get sad or it disturbs our equilibrium. But when you realise that the difference between um, ego and non-ego, you, you actually um, start to turn, it, turn off from that. You hear it, but you don't absorb it. And it's almost like you've turned off the sound and you can actually watch it with amusement, not nastily, but in a kind, loving way and actually know that you will not engage. And... Right. Um, it's amazing when you reach that stage. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I'd say the thing that helped me the most is I check every year. I start again. And today I'm in lesson 12, aren't I? I am upset because I see a meaningless world. And that's, of course, the miracles. I've been doing this now for eight years. And the minute I tap back into that little affirmation, I am upset because I see a meaningless word. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take the conversation now into another platform. And I'm going to say to you, we want to now understand this. We're going to look at how you can see everything from a more neutral way. Just before we finish, um, I was having this conversation with the sister, with my blood mm -hmm. sister, my little sister, who I'm trying to, to, to do my best with at the moment. I've backed off completely because she's blocked me um, again um, because I'm different and she just doesn't want to listen. Um, um, but she told me about a situation. Well, I told her she was having struggle with her youngest, who's very much one of us and hasn't come into it yet. And I said, she said, why can't I help her? Well, I said, well, because what you need to do is you need to be neutral. You need to look from above, not as her mother, not as the person that loves her more than anything, but as somebody who's stepping out and looking from above like a neutral being. And mm. that's what I'm going to take the conversation into now is for all of you who are watching most of you are star seeds. Most of you are indigos and crystals and healers that have come here to do the work. Just very quickly before I go into that, another struggle I've got at the moment, which I'm finding very interesting, Elaine, is I'm watching psychics um, or tarot readers, interesting, and they have absolutely no idea about the truth. I know, I know. You and, know what uh, I mean? And, and I, it's like they're talking about a pandemic and they're talking about this and they're saying they can't wait and, and, and they're getting paid like a lot of money. And I'm not saying they're not good at what they do. They are good with their readings, but then they jump into this, they, they go into something they say at the end of it, I can't wait. And I think, I can't believe this. How do you be psychic and not know who President Trump is, for example, again, which we can't say too much on here. But how does that happen? Who are these people? And, and, and you know what I'm talking about, so I'm not imagining it. And no. I said, I suddenly feel that this, per this is a good person. I've known this for two years. Yeah. And this is a good person, uh, that this is a person that you need to see beyond. How can they say that they're getting messages and they're the ones who are getting all the views? And I'm a bit confused about that. So how do you feel about that, Elaine? Because that really threw me when I was watching someone who I trusted 
Are you? Are we going to take a Thank physical you, break, or are we just going to carry on and then you'll cut it? It's very quickly in in this conversation because we're going to have people that are watching a lot of these psychics, and you've got to be very careful because Jesus told you as well. And I'm not. I'm Jewish, you know that, and I. But I do believe in the teachings of Jesus. Course in Miracles is my whole way of living. But this is the new teachings, um, which came through in the 70s, which is just love. Pure love. I, I can't wait to see what, what they took out the Bible. I mean, I want to see it. I want to see every word and all the scrolls and everything. They found okay. a lot of stuff. So, yeah, that will be interesting, won't it? But uh, before we take it into the next conversation, because we are going to get people. How do I feel about psychics? psychics. Who are, the only thing I can think of is, as a psychic, we are receivers, okay? And we are able to receive an awful lot of stuff, which is not good for us. You often meet somebody who's very negative, And by the time you've left them, you've actually taken on board a lot of their negativity. You absorb it. And I can only say that it takes being more than a psychic to be awake. You know, you have to learn to, um, it's like, I don't know whether you shield yourself when you're doing anything with psychics. Yeah, me yeah, too. I'm, yeah, I'm very I'm relieved. I, I have I my crystal. It. Yeah, I do it every morning when I wake up. I do it before I go to sleep at night. I'm shielded. Maybe these people don't do that. I don't know. But they might have taken on more mind control than even Joe Bloggs because they're psychic. Mm. So if they don't shield themselves from anything, mm. if they're not aware that there is a way that their uh, receiver can be interfered with, if you like, then they, will, they, they might be harder to wake up than the normal person. I mean, there's people that are the most enlightened that I know and people close to me as well. And yet they, they're going to have such a... They are even going to have to wake up um, with what we're going to talk about. Nothing, nothing, nothing will surprise me. Nothing. Everything no. that I thought that couldn't, you know, in my innocence, when I was innocent, I, I, to a certain extent, I'm really grateful that I had such a hard life particularly as a performer. Well, I mean, I haven't had it any... It woke me up. It woke yeah. me up. Mm. So I think, I think when the universe gives you a kick up the backside, it's usually a big one, okay? It usually knocks you for six completely. And you think, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? Okay. It's a, usually a huge life change. And I think that's happened to me probably three times in my life. And each time my life has changed direction completely out of it. With hindsight, each one has been a huge gift. Well, through being an entertainer and being rejected, continuously rejected, I mean, I sent different letters to each member of the royal family when I still believed in them about five years ago, I think to help me with my mental health performances because I was going out to talk about the therapeutic community and they were supposed to be working with heads together and trying to do something to help people and not one of them, not one of them gave me an opportunity to talk about what I was doing, which was a huge message that, you know, you do the breakdowns on the stage instead of real life and you don't need medication, you need your creativity and love, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but through all of that pain, I, I fell out big time with a, a light worker um, uh, in this last year. It is last year because she couldn't understand what I was saying about Madonna. And I said, well, of course, she's one of that lot. Come on, you need to wake up. Oh, no, you're just making. I said, no. She said, how do you know? She said, you're just jealous. Honestly, this is what people say would say to me, you're just jealous because you couldn't get there and nobody gave you a chance. I said, this is, yes, I'm jealous. Of course I'm jealous. I wasn't allowed to have a career, but there's no way I would have gone in a, in a direction that that what, lot went. I have absolutely, you know, no interest in anything that that lot are doing, but I deserved a career just the same as everyone else. And it's not jealousy. 
it's because I know in my heart and don't ask me why. But since I started to wake up, boom, boom, boom. It was like, oh, my God, I was right about that. And I was right about that. I was right yeah. about that. And yeah. I was everything like um i did it this is why they cut me off youtube i did uh, not youtube facebook i did a reading a couple of months ago and i can say this on here because i think a lot of people have already said it and i think it's safe but i knew that um the pre whoever will be the president we know that and we don't who looks like the cat as Boba bertha would say uh the orange with the white bits uh, yeah. He will not stay. He will leave and so, uh, someone else is going to take over, someone younger. And I kept getting General Flynn. I just kept getting it. And I said it. I said it and I'm still saying it. Uh, it would be him and someone else. And we know who the other one is. But we're going to take this into a new platform where we can say whatever we feel like. And that's what's so exciting. So we're taking the, the reins off. I, I just need a minute. If you right. too, and I'm going to pause so I can bring everyone in. Elaine, okay. you, you take a, sec a minute and I'll bring everyone in, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. So now we've kept it on the surface for everyone and we've tried to stay within the parameters that will not get us kicked off YouTube or Facebook. So I hope you enjoy that. And now we're going to go deep. We're going to talk about everything that we can talk on here. So it's going to be very exciting as I haven't been able to do an interview like that for quite a while now. So come with us into the other platforms that we're going into. BitChute, New Brand Tube, I, I, New Brand YouTube, I think it's called. Gab. Okay, I love you lots, guys. And come with me deep into that rabbit hole. Woo! Yeah. Okay, the, we've had an interesting shift here. Because Elaine's on the other side. <laughs> <You're> on the <laughs> I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> I don't know how that happened either. Um, so I was on the, well, on the right and you on the left, but then it's mirrored anyway. So yeah. um, I don't, you know, where is this conversation going? This is now the 